Look at this. I am running Snapseed. I've got Asphalt 9. I've got Instagram running here. All Android 11 apps running side by side on my Windows 11 PC. I think even Doctor Strange would be in awe of my sorcery and it is completely free. So how have I done this and is it actually worth doing? Running Android apps on Windows 11 is actually really convenient. I mean, Instagram, banking, shopping, and especially for quicker access to apps you're already logged in with, and also for apps maybe where there isn't a PC version or where the Android one is free. And then there's games. Well, sort of. The thing is, we've had iOS apps available on Mac and the Mac App Store for a little while now, and also Android has been available on some Chromebooks and also ARM-based Windows computers, but not a traditional x86 Windows PC, or at least not really until now. And weirdly, it comes in the form of the new Amazon App Store app within the Windows Store, although frustratingly right now it is US only while in release preview. So these are actually native Android apps running via emulation, and this is by far the easiest and the simplest way of getting access to Android apps. However, being the Amazon App Store, it doesn't have anywhere near the range of apps that you get on Google's Play Store, nor even Google's own native apps, and also, of course, your Play Store purchases don't carry over. So this official approach of having the Amazon App Store within the Microsoft Store on your Windows 11 PC or laptop is a bit limited, but currently it is by far the easiest way of doing it and not having to worry about sideloading apps or maybe even casting from your phone or something, but only a handful of phones and laptops actually work together nicely in that way. And with this, you can get even deeper into the technical stuff if you want, because the Amazon App Store app also installs the catchily named Windows Subsystem for Android, or WSA, which is Windows' official ARM software emulator. And this gives you some fine control over settings like the GPU, system resources, and various developer options. Think of it as the base control program for Amazon or any other App Store apps or games to sit on top of. This is also in a preview build form, so while it works, performance could do with a little bit of work, and the app and game selection is also pretty limited right now. However, there are some barriers to jump over, because currently, as I say, this is US only, and while I managed to download the WSA and the Amazon App Store and install it, even with my VPN, Surfshark of course, it still wouldn't work here in the UK. So if you're in the US, this is definitely the quickest and easiest way to try out Android on Windows. Now, crucially, you can actually download this, the WSA program, separately from that Amazon App Store. But this is kind of the secret source within Windows 11 uh, that actually changes everything when it comes to accessing Android apps. Now, there are other Android emulators out there, like Nox and Bluestacks, but these tend to use much older versions of Android, whereas WSA gets the almost up-to-date Android 11. So in the end, I settled on Magisk on WSA, which I found on GitHub. Installation is a bit more complicated, but this gets you the WSA and crucially, the official Google Play Store rather than Amazon's. And so the big benefit of jumping through these extra few hoops is that you get this, Google Play Services, Google uh, Apps, and of course your purchases and your save game data, if you will, all carry over from your Google account. Although in case you don't fancy all that Google tracking nonsense, then something like the Aurora Store gets you open source access to the Play Store, but without the Google App Store services. In either case, you'll need to enable developer mode in the WSA, download the Android SDK platform tools, and then use the command prompt or Android Studio app to sideload apps and games. This is definitely an in-depth process and could really be a whole video by itself, but I have linked to some of my favorite guides in the description below for how to do this. But then, when you have cracked the art of sideloading, you can install a launcher. I'm using Nova Launcher, which is pretty popular and people still use a lot on their phones. And that way you get access to some more basic apps like a clock and calculator and weather apps. And also the regular Android settings app, which gives you a few more controls you can play with. So all that is a lot. It does take a bit of work, especially if you're not in the US. Um, but we have access to the Google Play Store and the Google Play services and things like Instagram where I can post stories and reels, which you can't do through the Windows native app or even on your web browser on your laptop or your computer. So is it worth it going to all this fuss? Well, here I am up and running in the Play Store and Aurora Store and straight away I jumped into Instagram, YouTube, Spotify, Amazon Shopping, my bank, and I actually really liked having these down the side of my desktop, already logged in and ready to use. It's a genuine time saver, and it feels a bit like next-gen widgets. For example, I've got the Microsoft Store Instagram app on the left here, and then this Google 
Android version on the right. And while this is actually a little bit more responsive and similar to the sort of web browser experience, and you can now post images and videos, you can't do stories, you can't do reels but you can with this. As you can see, it's not flawlessly smooth, uh, despite having a very powerful PC here. And I have had a couple of issues with actually posting content sometimes. It is a bit buggy, although I would also recommend using the beta version of Instagram uh, to get access to all the latest features. But the thing is, when you come to actually posting content and you go into your files, there aren't any because this uses its own little partition of storage, 256 gigs, um, separate from what's obviously on your computer and also it's not running from your phone. So actually transferring files between your PC and this emulated Android device, which I think is actually emulating a Pixel 5 for whatever reason, is an extra step. And you can either use like an FTP transfer tool thing, or I found even easier, just download your favorite cloud storage apps like Google Drive or Dropbox. And then you can download your content internally and then post it. Bit of a fuss, but it works. But that's just one example. There are other benefits. For example, if you already own an app on Android, you don't need to rebuy it on your PC because you've logged into your Google account. And also the number of free productivity and photo editing apps like Snapseed or Lightroom Photo Editor. Plus the actual integration with Windows works really well. Keyboard and mouse support works well and you get actual desktop shortcuts to your Android apps and also full desktop push notifications, just like a regular Windows one. It's also useful that each app is dynamically resizable, but also there's lots more two-factor authentication apps to choose from on the Android store. And I really like being able to verify my Google security prompts without having to reach for my phone. So it is a pretty solid integration into Windows and it feels like we're just at that sort of point where soon this is all gonna work beautifully well and you don't have to jump through any of these hoops, but it is a bit of a faff currently and there are other limitations. Performance-wise, the WSA program allocates just over six gigs of RAM, or at least it did on my machine. But things can feel a bit sluggish and stuttery, even with only a couple of apps open. I mean, I'm running a top spec 12th Gen i9 with a 3080. This should be able to play Asphalt 9 flawlessly, but as you can see, the emulation, it's a bit stuttery and not great. I also ran Geekbench to get a rough idea of the CPU performance overhead that the emulation has. And actually it's not that bad in single core, but in multi-core it's actually a third lower, which is pretty big. But it's still a halfway reasonable score and doesn't really account for the performance issues. But less demanding games, I've got Alto's Odyssey here, or you know, just simpler games, they do run well and it works. And again, actually I'm using my mouse and keyboard here, Still feels like you're playing something on mini clip uh, from like, you know, 15 years ago on the web browser where I have to click the left mouse button to jump on screen. It took me back to, uh, what was it, Trials and those kind of games I used to play in school. Side note though, if you are running a Windows on ARM laptop or an ARM-based Chromebook, then Android apps will run natively and not have to be emulated so you'll get much better performance. But there is still a big problem. That, well, there's lots of big problems, but it's still not the full range of apps that you'd get on your Android phone or tablet. Now, in fairness, this is an in-beta experience right now, but we just don't know if apps are missing because they need to be greenlit for compatibility or they'll just be missing for good. More apps are being added all the time. Plus in the meantime, you can download and sideload other apps, but again, really that's only for enthusiasts. However, if you really want to play Android games on Windows, then something like Nox Player or Bluestack simulators get you closer to that stock smartphone experience with much better frame rates. So let's wrap up. And well, thank you first of all for sticking with me this long as it's quite a technical video. And you may also be thinking, what was the point in all that? It sounds like a real pain in the ass. And it is, well, no, it is but it works. And there are some definite advantages, the productivity, the banking, the security apps, having access to those on your desktop with a pretty seamless integration into Windows 11 is a cool experience. But I think what I'm most excited for is what's gonna come soon. All of this currently is in preview or in beta or US only. Eventually, we'll just be able to go into the Microsoft Store and whether it's a native Windows app on x86 or an emulated Android app, you might not even know. It'll just download, give you a desktop shortcut, and you can use it. And it should be, hopefully, that seamless. But it's all about options and flexibility. And you can, of course, just ignore all of this and not bother and just pick up your phone if you want, which is a lot easier, but it's up to you. So hopefully you enjoyed this. I will update the description below as things change or you know improve. Also check out my good friend Linus's video. He did something very similar on this. And also if you have any suggestions or workarounds or tips, share them in the comments below so everyone else can enjoy them as well. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Hit that subscribe button below if you enjoyed the video and want to, well, see more of me. And I'll catch you next time right here on the Tech Chat.
push.